Okay, all set? All right. Can you all hear me? Everybody hear me? Thumbs up? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm Miss Joanne. Miss, Miss Eanes mentioned that I would be speaking this afternoon. Uh, I'm also one of the master naturalists in the Central Piedmont chapter. I live in Buckingham County. And I'm going to be talking to you today. We're going to take a little walk in the woods together today. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about how to make an entry in your nature notebook. In your little camp package, your camp box, you should have received a notebook, an online notebook. Do you all have that nearby that you could get that out? Yes, Miss. I see Miss Suzanne has it. Everybody, Aaron Scott Furs. Are you with us, Liam? I think he Elise. is. I'm sorry, Elise. Everybody, there? everybody got something? Okay, after we take our walk, we're going to use that notebook. So just set it aside. You'll have a, something to write with as well. Okay. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about, some nature notebooks that I have. This is one of the first little notebooks that I ever got. I've had it for about 10 years now. And this notebook is absolutely full. There's not a single place to write in this notebook. And like I said, I've been writing it a long time. One of the cool things about doing a little notebook, some people call this a journal, is that I can look back in here and see when the barn swallows came back to visit me in the spring. I can look at the dates when I first saw a specific butterfly that I'm interested in. So it's like a record of things that you might be interested in. And, and you can look back and see if things are different now than they were in the past. This is the notebook that I have. This is a not as good a size as this. This is a very good size because I can put it in my pocket or in my little backpack. Now this will go in a backpack too, but it's a little bit larger, as you see, and it does not fold up quite as nicely, but I like it because um, it's, it's got more space. I'm not gonna run, I'm not gonna, you know, use this up quite as fast. And here is one I wanted to show you. This is a, a journal that I bought. And the person who wrote this is an artist. And she has, shows you um, things that she found in the spring. She didn't write or paint every single day of the year, but she picked certain days of the year to write about and draw something that she saw. So this is actually a, a, full, a full year of all four seasons of things that this person wants to remember in her lifetime. That little nature notebook that you have oh. might get filled up pretty fast, but if you enjoy keeping that, you can, you can buy another one. Now, when you take a walk in the woods, you might need a field book. Here's my field book for insects. I actually had to use this on the walk that we're gonna go on today. Here's one that I come, I come back to the house and refer to it. Here's my butterfly field book. Inside here, you have thousands of butterflies that can be found in the Eastern United States. I found, we found, we're gonna find a butterfly on our walk that I had to come to the field book to identify. And the Department of Game and Inter Inland Fisheries has one for frogs and one, a great one for snakes and a great one for turtles as well. So there's all kinds of things that you can pick up at the bookstore that'll help you identify things that you might find in the woods that you don't know what they are. The important thing is that you open your eyes and your ears, that you keep looking and listening. All right, 
remember, when you go on a walk, always let an adult know where you're going. That's very important. I even let my husband know when I'm going and where I'm going because you never know. You never know what's out there. Um, right now, I keep, um, this is a repellent for ticks and insects. I spray my shoes or my socks um, just to kind of keep them at bay. Sunscreen's a good idea. And I always have my binoculars because my eyes don't see like they used to and I can get a better look at things. And you might want to wear a hat. Okay, are you ready to go? <laughs> All right, we're gonna head outside for our woodland walk. Hang on everybody. I've been walking through the woods and now yeah. I've come to our first stop for the afternoon. This is my creek. I come back so me. let's take a minute and look and listen. What you hear? Water gurgling. What do you think you could see at this creek? I think maybe frogs, crayfish, fish. Yep, there are fish in this creek. Sometimes butterflies land there on the water. Uh, birds. There are lots of birds down there at, the, at my creek. So let me show you what I saw. Here's what I saw on the edge of the creek. This is a northern cricket frog. He's about the size of a 50 cent piece, maybe up to an inch and a half. These frogs are mainly active during the day. They've got very powerful hind limbs they, that enables them to jump large distances. And you might imagine they're excellent swimmers. They prefer slow moving, permanent bodies of water. They can often be found in large groups along streams, just like the one that I just showed you. And the northern cricket frog eats small insects, including mosquitoes. Let's see what else we can find. Aha. You see some clues? This is actually a, a the base of a tree in my woods and a, kind of a hollowed out area there. What clues are left behind that tells us a story? Yes, I see nut leavings, a shelter, and what do you suppose, what animal might be using this space? I think some of you are gonna guess this. All right, let's, let me show you what I found when I looked around. And I bet you were right. It's the Eastern Gray Squirrel. These guys are omnivores, and that means they eat food from both plants and animals. They forage for nuts and seeds and buds and flowers of trees. And like other tree squirrels, they play a pretty important part in what's known as seed dispersal. Because as winter starts to come, the squirrels, I know you've seen them, carry their food and bury it in several locations. And they hide more food than they're ever going to recover or eat. So those buried seeds that they don't recover 
and, and the nuts there might sprout and begin to grow in the locations the following spring. So that's, that's one of the ways that trees are planted by wildlife. This spot here, I start to hear a rustling sound in the leaves, and it's not the sounds of something running away, but rustling on the ground right at my feet. I freeze, and I start scanning the ground. Look what I saw. Ah! This is a predator-prey relationship. Which snake is the predator? So if you said the biggest one, you're right. That large snake is a black racer. It's not venomous. The behavior and habits of the black racer are pretty unique. It's an excellent swimmer. It's an excellent climber. And it can move incredibly fast, which is why it's called a racer. It mainly eats animals that are smaller than it. It eats insects, it eats moles, birds, smaller snakes, there you go, lizards, some rodents, and, and a lot of frogs. Now, the prey happens to be another snake. This is our worm snake. Can you see its little eye? They only get to be a little, uh, around a foot long. They're brown. They have smooth, shiny scales, little teeny eyes, and a little pointed tail tip. This species is most often found in rotting logs or under rocks or just in loose soil like mulch or leaf litter. They feed almost exclusively on earthworms, and that might be why they're called worm snakes. But they are prey to a variety of birds, mammals, and other snakes. I walked on a little further and decided to sit down on a log in the woods so I could listen. And I saw some movement along the path and then I realized it's a little woodland butterfly. And when it finally settled down on the ground, I snuck up to find it. It was very hard to find. In fact, right in front of me, it was almost hidden from view. What do we call that when a critter is blending in with its background? If you said camouflage, you're exactly right. This is a very small dusky wing butterfly, very well camouflaged. It's a quick flying darting butterfly, but it, and it's a member of the skipper family. You find it in oak woodlands and sometimes in fields. And of course, that's exactly where we are right now on our walk. We're in the woodland area. While I'm sitting on the log, another flash of color caught my eyes. It was another type of insect. Now, here it is. How did I know it was an insect? If you said it has six legs, that is correct. All insects have six legs. It's a beautiful fluorescent green. It has bright yellow spots. I had to go to my field guide for this. I took a picture and identified this as a six-spotted tiger beetle. So if you like to hike in the woods, you've probably come across these guys. Tiger beetles are often found in the hardwood areas. They have very long legs and they are fast moving predators of other small insects. They like to sit on logs to warm up. This was a little sunny spot that day. If you come too closely, however, 
they will take off and they can run up to five miles an hour. Pretty impressive for a bug that's only about a half an inch long. They have large eyes and excellent vision. So for their size, they are formidable predators and no wonder they've been compared to miniature tigers. This is the six spotted tiger beetle. Here he is, a close-up view. So as I walked out of the woods on my way home, I heard a loud piercing scream up in the air, and I looked up, and this is what I saw. Do you know what this is? We have some clues. Look at the beak. Look at the large eye. And even look at the tail, the color of the tail. So this is one of our raptors. The beak is a clue. It has a, a very sharp beak that it's a clue that it might be a meat eater. And he, he is. The tail, the reddish color is a clue that this is a red-tailed hawk. But red-tailed hawks are not normally this color. This hawk has a genetic mutation that doesn't allow it to lay down the color brown that they normally would. So he's very unusual. This is called a leucistic red-tailed hawk. And it's a large hawk. You might see him soaring in wide circles high over a field. Their wing beats are heavy. They can hover and flap their eyes. Excellent eyesight, always looking onto the ground. Mostly they eat voles and mice and wood rats. They eat rabbits jackrabbits and ground squirrels, birds, bobwhite, starlings, blackbirds, snakes, and sometimes even carrion or uh, something dead that they find in the field. So let's head on back. I hope you've enjoyed our little walk. This coming back through my field. We saw lots of living things, didn't we? We saw an amphibian. That was our little cricket frog. We saw a mammal, our squirrel, two insects, the six spotted tiger beetle and the dusky wings butterfly. We saw a bird, we saw the red tailed hawk. And then certainly we saw plants. Well, oh, I didn't say we saw a reptile also. We saw two reptiles, our snakes. It's amazing what's right there for you to explore if you look and you listen. All right. I want you to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Okay. Did you like that? Yes. I did. Yes. So, um, Elise. A favorite animal in there? Do you have a favorite animal? That you enjoy? Snakes. The what? snakes. Yeah. Who said that? Lace. Liam, what was your favorite? Probably the bird. The bird. That's very cool. That's a very cool bird. Yeah, the albino. Very. James, you just, was your was the bird your favorite, James? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like an albino. Yeah, so albino should have a pink eye, and I'm not sure from my photograph if it does. I can't really tell um, whether it's a true albino. And would a true albino have the red tail? Miss Mary, do you know? Um, I will get back to you in a few minutes. I'll look, look up and see if I can find some information on that. 
And I look at that picture and I say to myself, is there a pink eye? I'm just not sure, but I always heard they needed to have that pink eye. Right, right. That's funny, I'll the red it. tail, though. They have everything. I know. Skin. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. How about you, Anne? Did you have a favorite? I kind of like the frog. <laughs> I always hear the frogs, but I can't always find them. And I, I have know. never seen them on a tree. I know. Like, I, can't. I, used to, I used to catch frogs I, I when I was a kid. Be. When you were a kid? <laughs> when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh, Olivia, did you have a favorite? Uh, I, I think I'm with Elise. I think I like the snakes in this one. The snakes? Ah. How about you, Tim? I like that six spotted tiger beetle. Oh yeah, he's very cool. Talk about snakes. Oh, I thought it was a leaf bug. I'm going to show you. I don't know if this will show or not, but right here, I'm going to get it closer. You can see the mouth on this tiger beetle. See if you can see this. Does it, oh, like it, does it inject venom? It looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a serious, that's a serious predator there, don't you think? That's a bite. That's a bite if you felt you feel that one, I think. Yow! I would say so. Yeah, that's that's and, and the fact that it's so fast fascinated yeah. me. How about you, Miss Linda? Did you have a favorite? It's always probably gonna be the bird. The bird. The bird. Yeah, it's the bird. I think the bird the bird wins. I happen to like the snakes the best. I figure in my lifetime I'll probably never see another snake eating, uh, 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 you know, the prey being a snake as well. I think that's pretty unusual. That is unusual. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think Mary had something to say. I, oh, I'm typing it in. Um, it, I just read that a, a true albino has to bird has to have pink or red feet, legs, bill, and eyes. And it says not all white birds are albino and not all albino birds are white. So it would be the leucistic rather than albino. Thank um, you for answering that. So pink feet, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it has to have all of those things. That's what Miss Mary oh, read, yeah. That's, um, so yes, and eyes are all pale pink or red yes good i i think the eyes off when i look at that picture i sometimes see pink eyes definitely it does not have a pink bill or pink feet right so right. that that eliminates the albino so that's part of what we want to do as naturalists you're learning to be a naturalist is to explore and to learn and we can use you know, resources like this, certainly like the computer, which is what Mary was doing. I'm sure you were Googling that, were you not? I did, yeah. yeah. And that's what you wanna to do to learn. Um, and then once you Google, go make sure the sites that you go to are good, reliable sites. Yes, yes. Mary, I have a question for you, I'm sorry. So can you tell us, because I really, you used to be a librarian, right? Mary yeah. used to be a librarian? Okay, it's echoing a little okay. bit. But go yeah. ahead. Tell us, give us how will we know whether a recite is reliable or not? That's an excellent question. The internet is wonderful because there's so much information, but it doesn't mean that all of the information is good information because anybody can put information on the internet. So I went to sites that I know are reliable, like Audubon Society. That was the first one I went to because I know that that is a reliable site about birds and bird behavior. And then I went to one that's called the Avian Report. Many times if you go to a site that's .edu, that's your best bet. Or some of the ORG sites are good because they're reliable organizations. Um, better than some of the dot com sites. Mm. Mary. Quick tip when you're using the internet don't use Wikipedia. 
I thought that might be what you were going to say. Is that a good tip? Hand up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Miss Mary agrees with you. <laughs> why is that, Mary? Is that, James, why, why, why should you not use Wikipedia? Wikipedia? Give us the reason. Um, because, like, because anybody can post to that, right? On that particular yeah. site, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so after our woodland walk, we kind of shared some things that were that we enjoyed. Now we're going to use our nature notebook. So you'll want to take that out and your pencil. And when you when you record, there are three main things that you want to to get on your page. So you can open it up. Be sure your name is in there. By the way, that's the first thing you want to do. Is put your name in there somewhere on that cover or wherever you like. And now you'll put your date. And so today is Wednesday, June the 10th, 2020, or you can put 6-10-2020. And that way you can always refer back and know that what you're about to, to talk about happened on this day. And most people will make a note about the weather or the temperature or both. I was looking in this um, journal that I purchased and I noticed, let me see, on this day, we're June the 10th. Let me see if I can find June the 10th. I think I... Well, hot, it's spelled H-O-T. Anybody want to put that in your journal? Hot okay, June the 10th. It. On the day she wrote this, Thursday, June the 10th, <laughs> we're about 85 degrees, aren't we? And I think we're hot. sunny. 90. She took, she made a note. This is her day, June the 10th. She made a note of um, chickadees were singing. There were titmice everywhere. That's a bird. The rufous sided towhee was singing, Drink Your Tea. There was a soft breeze and a pale blue sky. Now, you don't have to do that. This is what this person decided to do. This is Helen Cor Carell. So I'm going to read you my journal entry and then I want you to take a minute and write something down about what you found interesting. This is my entry here about today and I chose the snakes to write about. I said, and, and by the way, when I actually found these snakes, it was not today. You know that I took this picture, put it in this presentation for you. I saw this snake on April the 5th. And it was sunny and it was 75 degrees on that day. Woodland walked today to the creek, stopped on the trail to inspect a wildflower and heard a rapid rustling in the leaves by my feet. Moved slowly to get closer and spotted a snake choking down another much smaller snake, a worm snake. I knew what that one was. The predator was warning me to stay back with a rapid vibration of his tail. Mm -hmm. I was able to take a few pictures as he gulped his prey quickly to make his departure. As he turned and shot away from me, I knew what it was. It was a black racer. His exit was going, was like going zero to 50 miles an hour in a flat. <laughs> and then I drew just a crazy little squiggly snake there. Mm, amazing. And stuck another little snake in its mouth. So choose the animal that you'd like to jot something down about. And we'll just take a few minutes here together of, of time just to write something down. Okay. Yeah. I want to draw attention to Joanne. You, you said your first clue about those snakes was when you heard the rustling as you keep making. That's important to note that it wasn't the eyes always that key you in. Anybody want to share? You do not have to, but if you'd like to, we'd like to, to hear what you have to say. I'm happy to share my journal if you want. Oh, sure. Okay. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> well, kind of, I guess. 
<laughs> so I just wrote, I was really glad you spotted the frog. I have never seen a frog in a tree. He was camouflaged. So I wonder if I would have spotted him. What were the clues that helped you? And then you answered for me that you saw the frogs jumping into the water. He yep. was a northern cricket frog about the size of a silver dollar or 50 cent piece. Right. <laughs> uh, same color. Thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm. 